I don't know anything. I don't know his name. I don't know anything about him. Um, but as we were driving home so that I could get here to set up and do this, I got a really strong like shot to the chest. So I do have a feeling that this gentleman was shot. I feel, I feel like this reading is going to be very heavy because I know that it has to do with the death of a child and that's heavy as it is, but there's something about this case that just doesn't sit well with me. Like I see his mother grabbing her son and that makes me want to cry. So I'm going to try to hold it together. I feel like it. this is a case of not getting the right person. I don't know. This kid feels like a good kid. I feel like he, he was just the wrong person at the wrong time. I just hope we could get our answers. You know what I mean? No mother should have to bury their child. I can hear you. <laughs> okay, oh my sure. God, Tessa, thank you so much. Hi, Nick. Thank you. Hey. I think we're good. good to see you. <laughs> all right. I think you're recording. Enough. Okay, perfect. All right. We're all set. There we go. Okay. Well, Tina, thank you so much for, for getting on here with me. And, and like I said, for taking the time to do this. And I know you reached out to me. Where are you from, by the way? Arizona. Arizona? Okay. So it's Arizona. Okay. Now you had initially reached out because you said that you lost your son. Yes. Okay. If you can do me a favor, because I know you showed me a quick picture of your son. Um, can you just give me his first name? Jamie. Jamie. Okay. Now, the first thing I have to tell you before we get into anything else, he has the biggest smile on his face. Okay. Oh. And as I connect with him, I need you to know more so than anything. The biggest thing is, is he said, please, please tell my mom I'm okay. Okay. I know that that's his first thing. The other thing up on is there's a connection to, so he just brought up, he said, ask her about the month of July. It was his birthday and the day he died. Okay. Now I don't want to know anything. Okay. Um, uh, besides that. So thank you for, for validating that for me. So July. He gave me a very strong hit to the chest, okay? So he made me feel that. And the thing that he showed me was he said, he goes, before I go any further, he goes, can you please tell my mom to stop feeling bad about not being able to help me? Oh my God. Okay. Um, <laughs> so he's, what he just showed me, okay, right, is he, he, I do feel as though this would be a gunshot, okay? I can't explain any other feeling that would give me what he just showed me. And so, was he shot in the chest? Yes. Okay. I feel as though I was outside, though. I was not inside a house. I feel as though I'm outside, but the next thing I see is I see you, okay? And so, he shows me, he shows me coming either out of a car or something, and then boom, and then he says, but then I saw my mother, okay? Oh, yeah. and this is what he remembers. He remembers seeing you. Now, from this point, he says my mom did everything she possibly could to help me, okay? He goes, but it was not on her shoulders, okay? It was not on her shoulders. That's all he needs you to know, okay? This is not your fault. You did nothing wrong. So he asks me to validate for you. He says you had a dream of him not long after he passed. <laughs> and he said, I need her to know that this dream was not just a dream. This was me coming to her because I needed her to know that I'm with her. So whatever this was for you, and I, and I feel like you know what I'm talking about, but he said, this was me. I need her to know that was real. That was not just a dream. So you understand that? Yes. Um, he's so funny. I feel like he... <laughs> He was funny. Oh my gosh, I feel like if he did something, it was funny, but if somebody else did it, it's not that funny. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, <laughs> he could just do something funny because he's got this smile on his face. Like, I feel like he's trying to mess with you guys from the other side. Like, he he shuts lights off and stuff on people. So pay attention for that. I don't know if he does it to his brothers because for some reason he's got this, this feeling like he goes to his brothers and tries to mess around with them to let them know that he was there. 
he turns on his electric chair. It lights up and the, the radio comes on. Oh my god! Okay, About three o'clock in the morning every every oh night. He just has such a big personality, and he said, "I just need my mom to know that this is me now. I don't want her to think about what happened." Okay. Yeah. He is talking about. Uh, does he have a grandmother who would have been passed? Uh, my grandma. He called her big grandma. Yes. Okay. Okay. He goes, "Grandma's here. I'm not by myself." Okay. And also, there's a there's a grandfather figure as well. Actually, there's two, there's two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> he's, so he's showing me like there's there's these people here. I also feel as though he may have lost a friend or somebody who would have been close in age to him. Does that yes, makes he sense. Did. Okay. He did. He I goes my. The way. Okay. He goes. My buddy's here, and he said, oh. he goes, and then there's grandpa, there's grandma, and. So he goes, I'm, I want my mom to know more so than anything, I am not alone. It's weird because your your son says this, this is interesting. He said that his circle that he had around him, he said, I didn't always surround myself with the best people, but yet I did not go down that path. Your son shows me a straight and narrow path, okay? Like, I feel like he wouldn't, he would have given the shirt off his back if he could have to people. Yes, he there used was, to help all those kids that didn't have both parents and he always would help them they needed a ride they needed money he goes i need my mom to know i was not involved with who this person was okay now what's interesting is as i was he in front of his house or your house or something like because i feel like i'm looking at a neighborhood i'm not yeah. looking at like i wasn't at work i'm looking at a neighborhood and yeah. He's showing me simply just coming out of a car or simply just walking. But what I see is a car pull up and the vehicle, he's showing me, he, it's weird because your son didn't have a good image of, of this vehicle. So I don't know if at first he was walking away from it because when he turned, I feel like this is when this happened. It was a silver vehicle. Oh my God. I'm going to write this down. Hold on. It was a silver vehicle. So then let's go here because what he shows me then is something about either trying to resuscitate him or thinking that in a moment he'll be all right. Okay. So what he showed me was being moved or brought somewhere. And I feel like I'm being worked on. So I don't know if that means hospital or how you understand that. But it was a, this is a case of him being in the wrong place at the wrong time. They weren't looking for him. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. They weren't looking for him. And and the feeling that I just got from him was, he goes, I, I was the wrong person. It wasn't me that oh. they were looking for. His energy feels recent. So I do feel as though he has passed not very long ago. It was uh, on his birthday party, July 17th, 2021. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So only like two years. I was having a birthday party for him. <laughs> And he lived with me because he worked for um, moving companies and he would drive all over the country and fly home. And we had just picked him up July 3rd from the airport so he could spend his birthday with us. And he forgot his phone in his car. <laughs> and he came back in and he said, I've been shot. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> I miss him so much, Sean. Till I take my last breath, Tessa. I work on it every day. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <fine. laughs> Here tonight, a Mesa family searching for answers after their son was murdered in front of their home. Investigators believe that Jaime Fernandez Jr. was shot to death at his own birthday party on July 17th. Jaime's mother says that he went outside to grab his cell phone from his car when the family heard several gunshots. Witnesses heard a car flying through the neighborhood near 88th Place and Main Street shortly after the shooting, but didn't get a good look at the make or model. The family recently moved out of their home in Mesa for fear of another attack. A 24th birthday party for Jamie Fernandez Jr. on July 17th, 2021, will sadly be remembered for all the wrong reasons. Does he know who they were looking for? 
Does he does he know who did it? Does he know their name? Do you see a license plate number? I have to get justice for Jamie. He's not here to tell his side of the story. You're never ever gonna be able to get over something like that. But it absolutely will take away some of the pain for my kids, I believe. If you know anything about Jamie's murder, you're asked to contact 480 Witness. Right now, there's a $4,000 reward. I wanna tell you, thank you so much, Tessa. You're I really so appreciate it. You're so welcome. <laughs> I wanna hug you so bad. Oh, I'm so happy to hear from you again. After the reading I gave to you, did any of that information help you? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. You had given me an amazing reading and you had a friend of yours do a sketch for me. Immediately, we recognized two of the three assailants. I forwarded all of that information to the detective. You had told me that one of the assailants was actually incarcerated. We didn't, we didn't know that. We thought he was still wandering around in the streets and hanging around in the neighborhood. But actually, he was incarcerated at the time of the reading. When I got the sketch, we immediately did a search, you know, in the prisons and there he was. So the detectives are making arrangements to go and speak to him. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, I got chills. I don't, I don't give credit to myself. I give credit to Jamie. He's the one who gave you that information. I was just the medium to be able to relay that. I was overwhelmed today when I found out that we were gonna be talking again because we are actually coming up on his two year anniversary, July 17th. So his birthday was July 15th. He would have been having a birthday this Saturday and then he was unalived on the 17th. So because of your sketch artist and your reading is the only reason why we're moving forward. Well, thanks to you. Oh, I have to say, Jamie just showed me, did your husband go golfing recently? Oh, yeah. Did he? Because we said, thank God my dad's finally going golfing because I was with him. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did. And it took him all this time to go. My husband told me to tell you. He said, tell that woman I love her. <laughs> he went and he felt amazing. He said he felt like Jamie was with him.